Welcome to Tradespoon and Yellow Tunnel. My name is Mark Carpell. I'm CEO and founder of Tradespoon and Yellow Tunnel. And today we're going to have a live trading room open to trade stock and options using our technology. Before we begin, let me know if you guys can hear me and see my screen. We'll begin shortly after. All right, present as usual, Bob, thank you. Sir Mark, welcome. Can you tell how to trade CRSP option given that FDA will approve its gene therapy? We'll talk about that, remind me. I mean, option spread, you know, if you, and I would give myself more time, right? If you think it's in six months, then buy leaps, you know, nine months out, 12 months out. So you buy leaps, there's a, obviously time decay, I would do a spread, right? So I would do a spread, but that would be my approach. But we can talk about that more. Um, let's get Discord guys situated. Market, let's view your trades. If you did Home Depot or Baidu or both, I would put orders to close them. That's what I'm doing right now in your personal account. Okay. All right. I think we can start. Welcome to Trade Spoon and Yellow Tunnel. My name is Lachar Pell. I'm CEO and founder of Trade Spoon and Yellow Tunnel. And today we're going to have a live trading room open to trade stock and options using our technology. For those of you who are new, welcome. If this is your first live event, do me a favor, type in first. Always want to welcome new subscribers. Um, started Tradespoon 10 years ago, over 10 years ago, almost 11 years. 
I'm super excited about that. Uh, Hidden stock, uh, my background is technology. I was a CTO of several publicly traded companies. Since I started TradeSpoon, you know, I spend a lot of time mentoring, teaching subscribers how to trade stock and options. I manage all of my own money. I've been doing it for over 20 years now. And I love building artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, different models to help uh, uh, with market trend analysis and key support resistance levels. Disclosures are very important. Please read them. Trading stock and options does involve risk and not suitable for everyone. You must be aware of the risks and be willing to accept it in order to invest in current market conditions. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not registered with FINRA nor SEC. I'm showing you what I do in my own account based on my own risk tolerance level for general education information purposes only. Please consult your financial advisor prior to making any trading decisions. Also, it should not be assumed that the future trade picks will be profitable or will equal past performance. You can see the relation between trade and training block on the bottom of your screen. All right, my number one goal is to make sure that we are all confident and disciplined traders, right? Everything else will follow, right? The education will follow, the part-time income, full-time income, you know, risk management, all of that will come as long as you're confident, right? How do you build confidence? Practice, right? How do you build confidence playing piano or skiing or playing chess? It takes time, it takes practice, right? There is no magic around this formula. This is just how it's been for, you know, since the humankind, you know, um, existed, right? And trading is no different, it, it is not, right? So the most important goal is first to build the process as opposed to uh, outcome. There was an interesting quote by Warren Buffett, people who are making, you know, if you're watching a score in a baseball game versus if you're plotch, watching a uh, playing field, right? If you're constantly glued to the score and you're not paying attention to the game, then, uh, you know, that's a problem, right? It's a problem in uh, baseball. It's a problem in uh, trading. So you cannot be glued to your account balances, right? You have to analyze your relationship with your money. That's right? another famous quote. And uh, realize that uh, you know you not, cannot be glued to your money. You know you can't be trading money that you know you, you need to pay rent, right, or pay for your kids' tuition. You shouldn't trade with that money, right? This is discretionary money that you've earned, you know, and you can put it aside and grow, right? And you don't have to think about it every single day, you know. So that's important, right? Uh, so process, the idea of the process is that it's a repetitive mechanical trading, right? You always have, you know, you have, you're going to have one, two, three, four strategies, but it's always the same setup. I, I like to do earnings power trader, uh, earnings trading because it's very mechanical, right? You always look at the volume, you look at the liquidity, you, you look at making sure that this is well covered stock liquid, right? And then you look at the estimated move analysis, you multiply it by two. And if you can get 30, 40 basis points on that estimated move, rinse and repeat, right? You sell iron counter, you close it the next day, rinse and repeat, right? And then making sure when the trade does go against you that, you know, you're making more money on your winners and you're cutting short the losers, right? Very mechanical trade, earnings are every quarter, you know, Microsoft, Apple, you know, Baidu, Home Depot, just cycle repeats, right? So it's very mechanical trading. That's why I really like doing earnings. Uh, but you could do this. I'll do the same thing with you know iron condors or credit call spreads on indexes or you know, ETFs or individual stocks. But very, very mechanical, right? And the idea is not to be married to trade, making sure that you're making more money on winning trades and you're losing less money on your losing trades, right? Um, and you're paying attention to process. Journal is important writing things down that's what helps you internalize the information and become a disciplined trader as long as you can see the light right at the end of the tunnel right the path yellow tunnel path um rinse and repeat right cash every time you trade soft landing okay 30 percent cash hard landing more cash 50 percent cash always four positions on average right especially if you're new to trading always four positions if you knew or you you in the beginning of your career you know 
journey as a trader, right? Treat it as a business. Always look at your goals, weekly, daily, monthly goals. Um, and never sacrifice process for the outcome, right? Cash, number of position, position size. Negative visualization, positive visualization, I encourage you to always do it on a daily basis or when you get into a trade, right? Before I get into a trade, I always, I always re, kind of very quickly, it takes me literally a split of a second, visualize positive outcome, visualize negative outcome. Why do I care about negative outcome? That helps me determine position size. Position size should always be the same, right? Number of, and not number of shares, right? You shouldn't always trade 100 shares. If, if, if you do that, you just have to realize that 100 share of $10 stock and 100 shares of $100 stock is different, right? You have different exposure, right? And you're not, you don't have a balanced portfolio, right? So positive negative visualization help you become, you know, compounding investment, right? If you can make half a percent, 1% a week, you multiply it by 52, and, you know, that's a reasonable return. <clears throat> Some people more, some people less. Just realize the more you want to make, the more risk you have to take, right? There's no uh, kind of uh, magic about that. Uh, spiders, again, trading in the range. We have retail data. So far, I guess reaction is muted, right? It looks like better than expected. Yield uh, actually were higher. Now they're pulling back slightly, but we're not, there's no new signal. 10-year yield is about three and a half. So that's kind of bullish for the market. So better than expected. You know, retail data, the rates are going slightly higher, right? Higher for longer since people are still spending. Headline news, um, the credit card balances, the you know, I think there's $17 trillion, you know, debt in the consumer higher than before the pandemic. That's a headline, you know, the question becomes how long can, you know, consumers spend, but nonetheless, short term, you know, no, you know, resilient, resilient consumer. And rates are slightly higher, no new signal. Same thing. If you think retail sales were great and uh, unemployment is low and we're in soft landing, great. Uh, your overhead resistance is 418 for short term trader, right? Short term trader. Let's see what the models say. <laughs> Let's confirm is the model. It's a little bit less biased than I am. Okay, 418, 410. The model sees potentially reaching year to date high and support is 410. It does expect volatility to pick up a little bit. Okay, 418, I would go short. If we do reach 416, 418 level, 410, 408, I would go long, right? If you're short term, Aggressive trader was a clearly defined stop level, right? So I agree with the model 410. Sorry, 410 is your support number one. 418 is your resistance number one. Above 418, 420, I would say, you know, resistance 430. I mean, we do have to clear last week high too. So model doesn't say that that's over, but it did before. For some reason, it sees doesn't see it. So I would say first resistance is we have to clear this level. Right? This is one prime. <clears throat> Support number one, and then obviously downtrend, 50-day moving average, kind of a classical setup. Um, especially if you're in soft lens and you want, you know, you should be a buyer at 50 day moving average, right? Card lens and, you know, only if you aggressive trader with a clearly defined stop level. So positive negative visualization, as soon as I want to get into a trade, you know, say I'm bullish and retail numbers are going higher. If I'm day trader, I would pay attention for, I would probably say this level, you know, if we break this, we're going to close the gap. So maybe, you know, I four points, right? I would do four points. It's one percent. It's not that much, right? And then if you're thinking about a couple of weeks, maybe a month, four or four, right? So right below that line, let's call it eight points or we'll double that, right? And then right away, my brain does calculation on ten thousand dollar account. I don't want to lose more than two hundred fifty dollars. If I'm doing day trading on twenty five thousand dollars, I want to lose risk less than one percent. So then, how many 
you know, I multiply this by 60. And here I multiply it by 30. And usually I do dollar cost average. So I split the trade at least into two. I didn't listen to two. All right, any questions? So uh, SRPT has been in the news, right? Any questions on position? This is the most important. If your brain is wired like that, Right, you have to rewire your brain. If you don't think about positive negative visualization, you can visualize that we can be at S2 or we can be at R2, then you don't have the position size correctly, right? And it's always the same size, right? I never want to risk $250. So low volatility, I do 60, 30 shares. If volatility doubles and the range doubles, okay, then I'm gonna do 30, 15 shares because it's getting wider, right? So it's not like I always risk 60 shares or I always risk 30 shares. It depends on your target gain stop losses, right? So this negative positive visualization is extremely important. It needs to be repetitive. It has to be written down in your journal. And I would suggest grade yourself, right? Be, be honest with yourself. You know, we're, reference book, uh, think fast, think, you know, um, by Coleman, right? So self-awareness, emotional intelligence, you know, everybody talks about it. They teach it kids in high school. They teach them in college. We need to be self-aware, emotional intelligence, you know, empathy. All of those are great concepts and great tools that should also be applied to trading, right? And you know, there are a lot of you know good books that I already recommended that I encourage you to review, right? Emotional intelligence, especially in this market, is extremely important. My market continues to go higher for the past 14 years. Okay, you don't need emotional intelligence. You just buy everything and everything goes up. But, you know, when for two years market is not going anywhere, then emotional intelligence is pretty important. Okay. Meanwhile, sorry, I forgot about my positions. Okay, Baidu is flat, Home Depot is down 2%. Nobody's buying lumber. The lumber prices are down, right? They revised their revenue down, forward-looking guidance. That's not good. So the bar was set low and uh, Home Depot did not make it, did not beat it. So let's review the positions and call out, close them. Again, Iron Condor, right? We talked about earnings power trader when we left yesterday. You can see the same thing in the lead circle, right? The lead circle is the same. So I did Iron Condor, collected 50 cents. I mean, I did have to hedge, but you know, it's about 40, 50 basis points, right? 40, 50 basis points, again, rinse and repeat. Uh, so let's look at that. Okay, buy the buy the buy the is not going to Home Depot put. So let's look at Home Depot down three percent to seventy eight. And then Baidu, let's see, where's Baidu? Fluctuating between gains and losses, so.
All right, so let's see. Right. So let's, okay, so I did Baidu down. So, so let's close the short put first. For, let's try for five cents. Again, sell off can accelerate at any point. It's only Tuesday. So I don't want to wait till expiration and then short call. Let's close it for three cents. So you can see that it's an elite circle, and in both you can set up a SMS message. A lot of people ask me about the trades, right? They open up support ticket. You always have trading recordings, right? Every session is recorded. I encourage you to review this trading session, and it will give you all the answers. Randall, thank you for leaving re review on Yellow Tunnel. For Yellow Tunnel, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you for your kind words, Randall. Uh, good morning, Faust. How are you? So, sorry. So, okay. So, let's go to uh, SRPT, right? So, the question was SRPT, you know, merger and acquisitions, right? In the news, they're one of their drugs got approved. Okay, great, right? Big jump from 120 to 155. Very nice. Uh, so if you have the same opinion on CRSP, right? You think CRSP, their drug is also going to get approved, right? Uh, and it's going to, you know, pop and get to 84, right? In the next six months. So two things I always do. If I think it's in the next six months, I multiply it by two, right? When we were, you know, bidding on the projects and software development, if I thought the project is going to take a year, I multiply it by two, right? That's kind of just life. So first of all, if you think it's in the next six months, multiply it by two and go into leaps, right? Option spreads. And by, you know, I mean, you see overhead resistances. I mean, it depends on your view, right? If you think it's going to get to 85, then you can buy 60, 80 call spread, right? Uh, if you think it's going to get to 120, then you buy maybe 70, you know, 120 spread. Right, but you know, leaps. The problem with leaps is the time decay. So you want to get into a spread, right? You want to get into a, it's going to double. Then okay, if you think it's going to get to eighty-five, then it's a different spread. But that's how I would do something like that, right? Because you think you know their drug is going to get approved and, and so on and so forth. All right, so ten to twenty dollars, yeah. 10 to $20, so I would probably do 60, 90 spread, 60, 80 spread. I assume, you know, it's a very volatile stock and there should be a very, you know, volatile options. Assuming they have options, do they have options? Not all biotech stocks have options. CRS. Oh, yeah, they have options. Yeah, they have options. So six months, we're in May. Probably January is cutting close, January 24. You can go to January 25. Right? I would go to J leaps January 25. Give myself, I mean, January is only six months. So if they don't have that approval by January, probably not enough. I would go to January 25, 60 put trades at $21, 80 put trades at $15. You can put that spread for, I don't know, middle point, maybe $6 to make $20, right? You can risk $6 to make sorry to make uh, $14 $20 spread so you risk six to you know double your money right two to one you can structure three to one right? if you think big pop then you do three to one you can make it wider but I would go into January 25 any other questions on the Home Depot and buy right so Home Depot complain about you know Prices of lumber, apparently it's 10% of their revenue. I didn't know that. Right? It's been very volatile. 
and obviously one of the themes, right? Whether it's steel, right? Whether it's steel or pre-pandemic, it was so trading at pre-pandemic level, right? Something something along those lines. But elevator up, elevator down, Russia Ukraine war, inflation. So now the prices are down. This is the you know 10% of their revenue. So they they cite it as one of the reasons. Uh, okay. Baidu was up 3%, down 3%, now flat. Uh, again, it's all about China, right? We had pretty sharp move to the upside yesterday. Chinese stocks went up. Today, you know, again, they're questioning the reopening, how aggressive it is. So it's down and, you know, stocks basically reacting to the macroeconomic news, especially Chinese stocks. Doesn't matter that they turn positive and they beat the estimates. Initial reaction was up three, four percent. Now it's down one to two percent. Right? So, and that's the theme, right? Whether it's prices of wood or prices of, you know, lumber or prices of um, steel, right? Elevator up, elevator down, right? Fear of recession, right? Fear of recession. And during the recession, people don't need steel, they don't need copper, they don't need, you know. Um, um, they don't need crude oil. Um, okay. I'm Sidar, thank you. All right, any other questions? Peter, welcome, thank you for signing up. Peter, how did you uh, find uh, yellow tunnel and trade spoon? Did you uh, like? Did you use the same email, or I mean, I sent you an email. I don't know. I didn't get a chance to get. But Peter, if you let me know how you found the site, you know, that would be helpful. But welcome, welcome, Peter. Thank you for signing up. All right. Um, okay. So let's see. What else is interesting? Uh, we talked about consumer loans. Student loans are going to be resumed to pay. So again, state of uncertainty persists. Nothing has changed. Home Depot is down. I'm watching my Home Depot. I know if you did, if you were at the closing bell yesterday, I did close. I did close. I did do both Biden and HD. I didn't do HD in Yellow Tunnel or Trade Spoon accounts because again it's a 280 dollar stock so my thought process i could be off usually by two percent not on off it's just market could have a surprise beyond the two estimated move usually it's you know on average two percent sometimes more higher obviously but two percent so two percent of 126 dollar stock if i'm off by two times estimated move i'm down 250 dollars two times two percent two percent out of 280 dollar stock I'm off by you know five hundred sixty dollars, so it's almost five and a half percent. So that's why if you have ten thousand dollars, I would do buy it, but would not do Home Depot, right? Especially if the risk goes to the downside. If you have a larger account, okay, then you can do Home Depot, right? It's liquid, you know, so stuff like that. Let me know if it makes sense. And meanwhile, let's look at the market. Spiders is flat. Spiders flat. Spiders flat. Let's see Home Depot put. Okay, so Home Depot put is continue to drop. 18 cents now. The 262 put, right? We talked about Home Depot last night. So I said I'm doing 262. So a lot of premium, 262, still within the range, but 262. Right? Probably don't want to hold it, right? Because you know, elevator down, the sell-off can accelerate. So let me see. Home Depot, Home Depot, Home Depot. Where's Home Depot? 
Oh, I'm out. Okay. Okay. So I'm out for 10 cents on the 262 put. I wouldn't wait, right? I mean, it is kind of rebounding. This is the time to close. A lot of people ask me, why do you close? Why do you waste 10 cents? A, free up buying power. This is very intensive, right? $10 wide spread I did. So that's pretty intensive in terms of buying power. Second of all, X, you know, this support, uh, you know, we're trading in their range. We can break it out, break out anytime, right? Not on retail numbers. Okay, what's next? One's done that much, but, you know, U.S. leading economic indicators and initial claims, right? We've been down, I don't know how many months already, probably almost, I think, 12 or 13 months. Don't quote me, but something along those lines. I don't think it's relevant. But, you know, for many months, leading indicators down. If we have another print, you know, another negative one or negative two, like we had was, you know, manufacturing data where it just kind of numbers that people just ignore it because they're so large, just kind of dismiss them. That could move the needle, right? That could move the needle up or down, right? Depends, you know, if it's positive surprise. You know, if economic indicators come in as positive one or point two, well, the market is going to rally because that's not what people expect. So for that reason, you know, doesn't make sense to hold on to these positions. Okay, so I'm out of 110 put on Baidu. Uh, and uh, getting close to <clears throat> the 152 and a half call. Any questions? Okay, not of Home Depot. This is what you recommend a short spread here on spiders. I mean, I did do spiders, right, in the in the dynamic power trader, right? I didn't do spiders. I did QQQ. My thought process value stocks are a little bit oversold. Technology kind of the last shoot to drop. So I did QQQ call spread in July. So that was my bearish trade right in dynamic power trader or elite service or premium service same trade idea so i mean you could do spiders right you can do spiders obviously because i mean you know we talked about catalyst bob is frustrated that i'm frustrated that we have in you know in the past you know whatever the time length right we were the longer the time run, you know we were up 15 percent, down 15 percent. if you look at the last two years if you look at the last couple of months, we were down, what is it, 4, 10, 3, 8, 30, 6, 7%, right, 8%. So we were 8% down in the past couple of months, 8% up in the past couple of months. But we're not going anywhere, right? So when you're not going anywhere, you do market neutral strategies, right? Market neutral strategy. This is an example of market neutral strategy, right? You sell call spread, you know, you, know, you might sell put spreads, right? We did this an earnings power trader. But that would be the setup. Thank you, Bob. Oh, Metastock. Wow, Peter, thank you. Love it. Love it. OK, so Metastock, let me. OK, I guess I should come to Metastock more often. Sending his some details and link thereafter. Peter, thank you for letting me know. Thank you. Thank you for uh, your subscription. Uh, love it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Article today. Article today. Historical false bear market bottoms in the past. Historical false bear market bottoms. I mean, if I understand the question correctly, I mean, it's the same discussion, right? Are we in a bull market? Are we in a bear market? So what's covered and used a lot, the soft landing narrative assumes that we have reached the bottom 
right? And we did have, you know, so, some kind of recession, but October was the bottom, right? October was the bottom. And now, usually, this fall as, as, idea of a false bear market is that if you roll forward from October to May, how many months is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight months later, eight months later, if this was a bottom in the bear market, right? We were we were we were in the bear market by definition. If we are in the bull market right now, it usually is being led by you know small cap stocks, but small cap stocks are sitting at 52 week low. So that's kind of a false, that is the argument against the soft landing, right? Yield inversion, right? Yield inversion usually you have a steepening of the yield curve, right? Two year should be less than 10 year, right? I mean, they're kind of converging, but there used to be a lot less difference between two to 10, right? It was 100 basis points. Now it's only 50 basis points. So yield curve is steepening, but it's still inverted. It's still inverted. I mean, you have this, uh, what is it called? Debt ceiling debacle, right? One month should not pay you five and a half percent, right? It shouldn't, right? Especially if three months pays you only five, right? So you have uncertainty in the market. Small caps should be leading. Uh, lumber prices should be going higher, not lower, right? Because construction, right? Supposedly, you know, you have home builders, right? 52-week uh, high, right? Nobody wants to sell their houses because the 30-year mortgage is way too high. So the only if you know if your kids want to buy a house you know either you have to give them a loan right my friends give loans to my kids to our kids and interest free right but not a lot of parents can afford that um or you buy brand new homes right because you know there is no existing home sales right nobody wants to sell their house and move because if you move to the same house your mortgage is going to be double of what so nobody's selling their existing houses uh, but Leonard and home builders are printing cash, right? Because everybody's buying brand new construction. But if the lumber prices are dropping, that means that inventory is drying out, right? At some point, the inventory is going to dry out, and you know, this new construction is going to be down, right? So that's a false kind of false assumption based on historically, right? At this point, oil prices should be at a hundred. You know, copper prices should be higher, and uh, dollar should collapse at this point, right? Dollar. If we're in the bull market, if we're in the bull market, I mean, even though dollar did pull back, but it should not be at pandemic high, right? This is a pandemic high. It should not be at pandemic high. It's still too elevated. So those are some of the arguments why hard landing, you know, the recession is looming, right? You know, soft landing narrative basically say this is all great and wonderful, but you know, we have this huge shock to economy, COVID, we stopped the global economy, we're restarting the global economy. So this time it's different. You know, as long as unemployment is low, everybody's working, right? It doesn't matter. Retail sales will be higher, right? And uh, people are gonna still travel and people are gonna spend. We're service-based economy, 75% of the revenue is derived from services. So we're you know, this time it's different. That let me know if that makes sense. Uh, EWJ, Japan. I mean, it's pretty bearish, right? Pretty bearish price pattern. We retested pandemic law, huge rebound. I mean, again, if it's a recession, I mean, people hide in yen, maybe you can buy yen currency but not emerging market right i think emerging market is you know overdone right this is mostly china i don't think japan is the place to hide right especially with the and obviously emerging market japan is not emerging market but japan is up because dollar is down right i think dollar is going higher right this is the hard landing right the problem is the hard landing narrative the dollar dropped and sitting on the key support right at 100 still elevated compared to historical levels but nonetheless you know down 15 percent so you're not going to have a hard landing if the dollar is going to be at 100 or below dollar has to rally and usually dollar rallies when there is a panic 
And usually there is a panic when there is some kind of a trigger. And usually by definition, trigger is a blood swan event. What is a blood swan event? I have no idea. Can you predict? Yeah, there is a book, right? I have a, on Yellow Tunnel, we do have a blood swan event approach, right? Blood swan by, what is this guy? Philippe? Philippe, yeah. Great book, right? He's a famous author, you know, very strong quant, right? He's a quant, worked for a lot of hedge funds or several hedge funds, uh, very strong mathematical inclination. He talks about Black Swan event. Very good book. If you never read it, then I, I, I propose you read it, right? So again, talks about market conditions and talks about these triggers, right? Everybody's trying to predict when the trigger is going to happen, when you're not going to be able to do it, right? You know, we've been six months in this narrow range. We could be six weeks. We could be another six weeks, right? You think it's, uh, you know, whatever the uh, see that feeling. You think it's retail numbers. You think it's inflation data. The answer is no, right? Something gets, you know, inside it. Right? That's usually what caused these triggers. It was the same thing in 2008, same thing in 2001, 2002. What that trigger? When is it coming? We don't know it, right? And then so you you allocate certain percentage of your portfolio to hedge, to hedges, right? To hedges. Oh, Peter, thanks a lot. Appreciate. It. Thank you. Thank you for kind words. All right. TLT is not doing well. Broke through support. <clears throat> TLT is weaker on retail numbers. It is. Breaking down, I agree. Now, as I said, when I enter that trade, you know, position size, right? My brain works always. TLT cannot go down, right? Yield is not going to go higher, right? Indefinitely, right? If you're bearish, right? So yields are going higher because it's still trading in the range. So as long as it's in the range, 10 year yield is in the range, I would not be overly concerned. Right, 30 year is also overbought around you know, 396, 4%. 4%. I would be concerned if 30 year is at 4.3, right? Because the problem is if the yield continues going higher, the problem is that, you know, that means Fed is going to stay long, higher for longer. The probability of that black swan event is going to continue to increase, right? So for now, I always look at what is my exposure right if you're gonna if we're gonna reach 98 and you're gonna be down more than two and a half percent that's a problem so maybe it means you know maybe you need to reduce your position but we could be at 98 73 or there in february right or there in december so that's december low at 99.84 right call it a little bit give yourself a little bit more room 98 right 98 99 you do you want to be less than two and a half percent down if you're going to be more than two and a half percent down yes it broke to support i propose to reduce your exposure i've been trading around this position purposely small to make sure that if we do have these pullbacks on better economic data then you know All right. Ted, thank you. Bob, thank you. Then, thank you. Okay. A lot of people, a lot of thank you. Great. Uh, okay, let's just double check, make sure there's no surprises in the earnings trade. Okay. So, buy the turn positive. Home Depot had a strong rebound. Blood, that's good. I'm going to close my RN calendars. Let me just review. By the 150. Okay. It's going to get out of by the put. By the by the by the put. Let's see. So I should be out. I should be out. Okay, I am out on the put. Uh, call getting close. Getting close. Okay.
Meanwhile, let's look at spiders. One hour chart. So spiders are rolling over, right? Again, 414 has been overhead resistance. It's rolling over slowly, kind of in the middle range, right? It's a flip of a coin. We could be at 414 or we could be at 409, right? And QQQ is up, right? So we'll see. Okay, let's review the rest of the positions. Let's review the rest of the positions. Uh, so for Yellow Tunnel, for Peter and other Yellow Tunnel subscribers, Elite has everything, right, kind of all in one subscription. All trades are in one place. Yellow Tunnel, I can segregate them because the idea that, especially if you're new to trading, you don't want to have too many signals. So if you want to do earnings, you do earnings. If you dynamic, you do dynamic. Here, it's all in one place. So it's a little bit com easier for me, but for the beginners, it's, easy, it's hard because there's just a lot of trades, right? So you have to pick the four positions you want to trade in. Nonetheless, let's review. This is the earnings trade. Again, Baidu. I'm out of Baidu. CMG, kind of not going anywhere, right? I mean, market is not going anywhere. CMG is not going anywhere. So I'm waiting. Right? Again, small stock. For those of you who are new, I always think about mechanical trade, right? Building confidence. How do I build the confidence? If the position size is correct, you know, there's two things that are going to happen, right? <clears throat> you know, people are going to, you know, market is going to break down and pull back. Then most likely this breakout is also going to be in jeopardy, right? So if we drop below 1890, I would be worried, right, on CMG. So again, 1890, 2045 is about 150 points. Let's call it, I don't know. 8%, 10%. So it could drop 8 to 10%, right? So if you buy one share, you're down to less than $250, right? So if you buy $10,000 count, you buy one share, okay, you would then $250. And $10,000 count, $250, right? If you buy two shares and we market breaks down and you, you know, drops below 80, 90, you're going to be down $500. So then it's probably inappropriate for $10,000 count, right? For twenty thousand dollar can okay, you can buy two shares, right? So that that's the the thought process. NOC same thing, right? The goal is if we break through the support line on the aerospace defense to be down less than two hundred fifty dollars, right? So I've been trading around this position, you know, probably for a year now. Um, so if this level doesn't hold, then I would just get out of this trade. Right. We do have this Russia-Ukraine conflict. Unfortunately, the war is still rages on, but I think people are betting that Ukraine is going to kick Russia out and they're going to write a peace agreement or reach some kind of an agreement. And, you know, you don't need to buy as many, you know, <clears throat> uh, military equipment. Fine. We'll see. Uh, so for now, still holding on to NFC. So again, market has been neutral. We've been up 15%. We've been down 15% on the two-year scale. On the six-month scale, we were up 10% from this point. We were down 10%. So that well, that is a good argument that nobody knows, right, whether we're in soft landing or, or in hard landing. For that reason, <clears throat> I propose to have some position long, some position. I think I can get lucky and, you know, because of the model, it will outperform the market, right? It will outperform the market. The rest of my positions are bearish, right? So QQQ, I'm hedging my long position. I have a put spread and call spread in June. I have put calls, you know, bearish call spread in July and bearish puts spreads in September, right? Option lettering, right? I'm using option lettering where I'm different strike price, different expiration months, because I cannot predict black swan event. My opinion is that we are trading in a bear market, right? So I have more bearish position than bullish. But are all my bullish bearish position? No, 
right? Because if all my positions are bearish, you know, especially in December, that would be painful because market is up, you know, 10, 15 percent. So some bullish, some bearish. <clears throat> if you're uncomfortable trading options, some of these bearish positions could be SH. This is inverse ETF, one to one. Keep again using dollar cost average can build in position on SH silver, right? Silver. I'm bullish on silver because again, I'm bearish on the market. That's another hedge. Strong pullback, it's holding on to the support level. You know, I'm not adding, I'm waiting for at least one green green candlestick because if this downtrend doesn't hold, it could break down to 20 level, right? It could. That's another, you know, I mean almost 10% drop. So silver is very volatile. Same thing, position size, right? If you bought, I mean, what did I buy? 22, right? 23, right? 23. So if you bought it at 23, right? If you bought it at 23, and let's say it's dropped to, to 20, right? It drops to 20. You know, if you had 100 shares, okay, you were within 2.5%, right? If you bought 200 shares, then you could be down Five hundred dollars. So on a ten thousand dollar portfolio, you don't want to be down two and a half percent if it reaches twenty. So maybe this is you know if you do see that it's breaking down here, then just you know reduce your position size to a point where at twenty you're at two and a half percent. I still think this is the year of precious metals. It's just it reached fifty two week high. There's no catalyst to break to the upside, so it's pulling back. And same setup in gold miners and gold. um so that's uh, sh silver we talked about tap right tap is not going anywhere similar price pattern to cmg right it's actually is rolling over a little bit uh, but you know i think xlp right in, in general consumer staples has been a great place to hide but it's toughish right it's just it's not going anywhere the safety class is not where you can hide for too long, especially when you overbought. You can see utilities have sharp pullback. You know, healthcare um, rolling over. So you know these last places where people are hiding, they are kind of slowly rolling over, right? Whether it's healthcare, but slowly it's you know rolling over. Semis are actually having a good week this week. All right. And finally, XLF, right? This is again false, you know, going back to Todd's question, you know, Wells Fargo, right? Wells Fargo should not be that low, right? I mean, Warren Buffett doesn't agree with me, right? Warren Buffett just announced that he's investing to Capital One card right you have huge rally in capital one he's selling his regional bank and he's buying bank of america right he did it in 2008 he's doing it now right but keep in mind he's a value investor right he looks at the balance sheet he looks at the cash flow and he says vlad you have no idea what you're talking about in the long run in the next five ten years bank of america will be at 50. and he's a value investor i respect his opinion but that doesn't mean that Bank of America is not going lower initially. He just doesn't care, right? He's a value investor. I'm more of a, you know, top to bottom, macroeconomic, microeconomic, more of a technical trade. I can't really, talk. I mean, I know he's right. The Bank of America will be at 50, but, you know, he might wait. He might have to wait, you know, a few years. You know, I don't want to wait 10 years and only see that Bank of America actually drops to, I don't know what the next level is. 20 right he doesn't care warren buffett is going to buy if bank of america drops to 20 right he's not going to give up his position just like accidental petroleum so and that's totally fine so if you're a value investor and you think bank of america at some point is going to be 50 and you don't really care that it's you know going to be at 20. yes but same rule applies right warren buffett is a very disciplined trader he looks at his balance sheet he looks at the cash and he knows that at 20 he's not his portfolio is not going to be down more than two and a half percent. I almost guarantee you that, right? I mean, he's investing millions of dollars, but you know, he has billions of dollars. So he knows that at 20, 
he's going to be down less than two and a half percent and he's going to add to his position so you can trade like you can invest like warren buffett like value investor but the rules apply right if bank of america drops to 20 for some reason because we're in recession then you want to you know you want to add to that position you don't your portfolio should be down more than two and a half percent because if you bought like warren buffett bank of america accidental petroleum capital one financial and whatever else he's buying right and then all of a sudden we do have this pullback you don't want to be down more than 10 percent right warren buffett is not going to be down more than 10 percent if we're going to reach pandemic lows right in banking sector he's not so um, that's important I want to see a red on the map. Everybody's hiding Apple. My, yeah, right. There's literally, you know, I can count on my fingers how many companies are holding the market. That's not a good setup, right? That's not a bull market, right? You shouldn't have, you know, five stocks or 10 stocks holding the entire market. We do have this, you know, everybody's drinking artificial intelligence Kool Aid. It's great. I love it. You know, we have neural networks. So I'm, I'm, I love it, right? but you know they did that in you know 2001 right everybody was uh drinking internet kool-aid right from you know 99 to you know 2001 right internet is going to change our world let's buy these companies i mean i'm not comparing to 2001 but you know that that euphoria can last longer than any of us, you know, can stay solvent, right? So that's the reason for being bullish and bearish. And, you know, who knows how long this AI uh, will last, right? There are already, I think there's some studies that basically said, if we didn't have this chat GPT, you know, market would be down by 8% from current level. I don't know how they calculated this, you know, maybe they're counting how many times this AI word has been used. But I think that's a good argument, right? That we are, the market is being hold, held by, you know, come by, by this new internet wave, right? This is going to change the world, right? Like, in, like internet changed the world, you know, cable TV changed the world, you know, air conditioning changed the world, cars changed the world. Yes, AI is going to change the world, but that doesn't mean that the world is not going to be lower you know, stock market is going to be lower at some point than it is now. All right, it's 9.14. That's all I have for today. Keep in mind, uh, QQQ is pulling back, turning negative. Value stocks, right, um, down sharply, right? This is another argument. In the bull market, if you reach the low eight months ago, the cyclicals should be leading, right? Cyclicals should be leading, not just, you know, NVIDIA and Google, Microsoft. And cyclicals are breaking down, right? So everything but NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, Meta are breaking down, right? And we're sitting on the key support. Not a good price pattern. Um, and you can see home builders are rolling over. What else is rolling over? Rates are not rolling over. TLT is rolling over. So value stocks are pulling back sharply. Spiders continue to go lower. Or do we have any other announcement? Did I miss something? Tuesday, 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 Tuesday. Uh, industrial production, capacity utilization. I assume some of these numbers are not so good, right? Maybe chair. That I don't think so, but probably, you know, the retails were better than expected. Industrial production, I assume, is worse than expected and the market is rolling over. Okay, uh, that's all I have for today. Again, for, you know, spiders are rolling over a little bit, but no new signals, at least for now, right? My model predicted for, was it 410, did it say? 410. So as long as we are at 410, model did a good job basically saying that this level will hold. I mean, next level is 409. Right, so as long as we are four or nine, we hold four or nine, four ten. Mar, you know, bull. You know, we're still trading sideways. If you break through four or nine, that on one hour chart, candlestick one, candlestick two, candlestick three, we're below four or nine. 
that means we're going to retest 50 day moving average one more time. Thank you very much and have a great day. ENPH, Scott, ENPH. You have a put 164, so it's a short term. ENPH is rolling over. What does the model say? What does the model say? Probably negative because the earnings were pretty negative, right? So I assume it's not going to be a surprise. That's actually up 10 days. Was there some kind of a split to 24? April 26 to 24 to 28. So, I mean, there was a big drop, right? After earnings, let's roll to one day. So, model is bullish, right? Model is bullish, at least for now, for the next 10 days. And the reason is, you know, it's a big drop, right? It's a big drop. And for the past 10, 15 days, we continue to make higher. So, I mean, it'll probably be uh, correlated to SMH, right? At this point, it's going to be correlated to SMH. So if SMH is going to go higher, then ENTH might go higher. But I agree with you in terms of setup, you do have a clearly defined stop, right? Reaction session high after the earnings. So as long as we are above one, below 182, it does look like it's rolling over. But if, you know, it might be in the next 10 days, model basically says it could be get to 182, right? It could get to um, close prices 182, right? In the next few days. So I agree with the model. Will it get to 231? I probably don't agree. The reason it shows because it's just a very large move, right? Elevator down, it assumes elevator up. In this current market environment, I don't agree with the model. I think it could get to 181. That's what model sees. That makes sense. In the past 10 days, we're continuing to rebound. You know, sometimes it's 50% retracement. Sometimes it's full retracement. Faust, yes. Bob, yes. Closing bell today. Uh, keep an eye on the email. If I cannot make it because the surgery is taking a little bit longer than I thought, or it takes longer to recover, I might not be able to be there at the closing bell. So keep an eye on the email. I will send an email if it's canceled. If it, you don't see an email, then assume we will have a closing bell. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You guys are wonderful. Thank you for your support. Peter, thank you for kind words and signing up. Thank you, Metastock, for the conference. And I will see you guys at the hopefully closing bell, if not tomorrow morning. Either closing bell or tomorrow morning. Thank you very much.